Now, when I have transported the patient to the cath lab, we will be taking an excess from the femoral artery of the patient, send up a guide wire retrogradely toward the heart and then inject the dye to actually see which blood vessel is thrombosed and in this case mostly it's going to be left main coronary artery. Hi guys, welcome back. The next topic we're studying is Taco Tosubo Cardiomyopathy which is also called as Broken Heart Syndrome. This condition actually occurs due to excess of catecholamines. Now when I say that, the query of most students is that sir, catecholamines are protective. In physiology, we have studied regarding fight or flight phenomenon. I'll put it like this. You come out of your bank after withdrawing your salary and somebody is standing outside with a big knife and says, hand me over all your money. Well, I would be more than happy to hand him all the money and say, sir, please let me go because I don't want to be stuck by this guy. On the other hand, let me say it's a puny guy, a short guy and he's trying to threaten me. I might actually give him a sucker punch and this guy will actually lose consciousness. But the point is not boasting, but the point is, the point is that guys, catecholamines are going to be protective in nature. But in this particular condition that I'm going to explain to you, catecholamines can be life threatening. So we need to understand what is really going wrong in this case and why is this particular nomenclature and at this junction when I write the word broken heart syndrome, I want you to remember that the word Takota Subo per se is from Japanese language and Takota Subo highlights the fact that there is a, a rather a jar that is used to trap an octopus. Now, how is an octopus related to cardiology is what we need to understand. The bottom line is that in this condition, there will be so much of catecholamines released. I'll give you reasons also. But the point is, the moment the catecholamine surge will occur, that's supra-physiological levels of catecholamine in the body after maybe an intense emotional trauma, the same catecholamines will now damage the myocardium. It will cause a change in the shape of the left ventricle, especially the apical part of the heart might balloon out. And this is what is highlighted. If you look at the shape here, the shape of the heart per se, you see what the importance is guys, that the shape of the left ventricle is responsible for the effective hemodynamics. If there's a going to be a catecholamine induced damage to the myocardium, then the effective hemodynamics are lost and the heart is not able to pump properly and therefore there's a cardiogenic shock developing in a patient. I highlight the fact once again that Takoto Subo in Japanese basically means a jar that is used to trap an octopus. The octopus head once it will get stuck in this area, then it will not be able to come out. So this ballooning that is occurring of especially the apical part of the heart. It could be actually any wall of the heart per se, but usually it is the apical part of the heart. So that's why the name given is uh, octopus trap slash taco to subo cardiomyopathy. As I said, catecholamine surge is occurring. Why? It is due to intense emotional trauma. Now to explain this, I can actually re relate to certain media events also, which I mean, those events have been widely circulated on YouTube and I would say Facebook, Insta, social media. Uh, let me say a uh, husband died. And uh, while coming back from the cremation ground, within two hours, the wife also died. I mean, I'm talking about a couple who were madly in love. They were married for 50 plus years. And the wife is so heartbroken because of the demise of her husband that she actually died. And maybe she told her son, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, just going, I'm just going to meet my husband, right? And the son is telling you that my mom told me that I'm going to uh, go with my father to heaven. I mean, that's how people with non-medical people will talk. You and me as doctors don't believe in heaven, etc. But the bottom line is there has to be an intense emotional trauma. And please appreciate here the intense emotional trauma is not about a boyfriend, girlfriend breakup. I'm talking about uh, somebody who has been crazily in love for a large number of years. And it's not going to be related only between uh, from the perspective of a husband and a wife. I can give an example of a soldier and a sad story again. This soldier was posted at Siachen Glacier and uh, well, he was uh, shot by the Chinese. There was a headshot. Now, when the body of the son was brought back to the village, when the mother saw that injury to her son that his brains were actually blown out, she just lost it and uh, she had so much of intense emotional trauma Then the mother also died. So we do hear about such kind of stories where even after death of a pet dog, a lady in South Delhi died. So, I mean, we, we have to realize that there is some connection between this intense emotional trauma and damage to the heart. And I'll, I'll give you a clinical example that will make you understand this basic concept relatively better. So let's look up a real time scenario that I have read. This is a 60 year old lady. 
and uh, she got trapped in a elevator like at the moment earthquake was occurring and because of this the electricity went out and she was trapped in the elevator for only maybe five minutes or so you see you can put yourself in that situation that there's the earthquake happening now normally during earthquake uh, they always advise do not take the lift do not take the elevator and go via stairs but maybe she was having some arthritis problem osteoarthritis or bilateral knee so she could not obviously climb down the stairs so she decided to take the lift and the moment she went into the lift and the lift started descending the electricity went off because of the earthquake and the lift was stuck and the whole lift was shaking vigorously the building was shaking vigorously and this lady had was a near death experience because you see if you are stuck in the middle of an earthquake that is itself so a uh, emotionally charged issue that if you are inside a lift and there's no electricity it's all dark and you never know when the lift is going to crash that's really going to be a near death experience for anybody Luckily for this lady, she was rescued and she was rushed to the hospital. So let us see what the medical crew will find this lady speaking and what will be the findings on workup of this lady subsequently. She was trapped in an elevator as I explained. The earthquake is not a routine earthquake. Let me say it is on Richter scale 7.0 or even higher. I mean the whole building was literally on the verge of collapsing. She is trapped in an elevator during an earthquake. That is the scenario or the life-threatening episode that I'm talking about. And now once she was rescued, luckily the lift did not crash. The building did not fall like a pack of cards. And she has been rescued by the emergency crew. But she's all sweaty. She's all nervous. Her hands are shaking. And uh, she's suffering from excruciating chest pain at rest. It's been only a couple of minutes but this chest pain is so bad that the medical crew have made a decision to take her to the hospital and on the way to the hospital even the medic is finding that her hands and feet are cold and clammy. The medic is saying sir when we opened the lift we rescued her from the lift that was within few minutes when the earthquake stopped but they are saying sir we found that initially she was talking but while we were transporting her in the ambulance she actually stopped talking and her head was lying on one side and we checked the BP it was really very low and her hand and feet were almost icy cold to touch. So when I got a call to see this case, the moment I put on a monitor or I evaluated the pulse rate of the patient slash heart rate, I found that the heart was beating very fast, obviously due to catecholamine stimulation. But then catecholamine should have contributed to increase in the blood pressure in this patient because I said there can be cardiogenic shock due to catecholamine induced damage to the myocardium. That is why blood pressure is low. And I'm really worried about this lady. Why? Because I am thinking that she could be having even a myocardial infarction no? because MI can also occur after an intense emotional trauma. In fact, the first differential diagnosis of the current case that I'm discussing before you is frank myocardial infarction. And when I saw the ECG, it was showing from V1 to 6 uh, a proper ST segment elevation. It was a proper classical what I have described earlier, the ST elevation with the convexity with the T wave inversion present. So we had this proper classical party sign present or maybe even he might use the word tombstone pattern. Both imply, I mean, when you look at the word tombstone, no, it, it looks like patient is going to go to God. So unfortunately, I suspect that I'm dealing with a case of anterior wall myocardial infarction. The bio marker report is still pending. I've decided to take this lady up for a percutaneous coronary intervention because that's the treatment for STMI. And uh, while I am planning to take her into the cath lab, the report also came of tropon in I, which was double. So I have confirmed the diagnosis of MI. I mean, I've already explained this to you, chest pain at rest in combination with ECG findings of myocardial infarction, ST elevation convex, doubling of uh, tropi. This all is definitely going to highlight that this patient is uh, suffering from a STEMI. And even this report is not available. Still, I have to take up the patient in the cath lab. Now, when I have transported the patient to the cath lab, we will be taking an excess from the femoral artery of the patient, send up a guide wire retrogradely towards the heart and then inject the dye to actually see which blood vessel is thrombosed. And in this case, mostly it's going to be left main coronary artery. But when we looked up the coronary angiogram on the monitor, the coronary angiography report of this patient was shockingly normal. Look at the surprising thing that I'm teaching you. I am suspecting that this person is having a ST elevation MI on the basis of clinical findings and ECG findings and TROPI report is pending. Maybe come, come after some time. If person comes early, TROPI can be normal also. It doesn't matter, no. It will get elevated anyway because there is necrosis in the heart. But bottom line is that coronary angiography in this condition is normal, which is ruling out the diagnosis of ST elevation MI. In fact, it is like throwing the diagnosis out of the window. 
Now when the bedside echocardiography of this patient was performed that is when this surprising finding was formed that there was a gross change in the shape of the left ventricle especially when it comes to the apex it was bulging out like a jar that is used to trap an octopus so therefore the diagnosis of tachycardia cardiomyopathy is usually made in the cath lab and if you do not have a cath lab facility then lots of time this diagnosis will be missed this patient might be even erroneously receiving thrombolysis with no relief because you see if you do thrombolysis in you and me or in this person it's gonna not cause any improvement because there is no thrombus in the coronary artery rather it might be counterproductive and it might actually result in death of the patient due to a cns bleeding so message number 1 is taco to subo cardiomyopathy slash broken heart syndrome that is the term that our examiners love to use is a differential diagnosis of st elevation mi the diagnosis of this condition though it is rare is made in the cath lab if we do not have a facility for cath lab the case is likely to be missed and whenever you gonna evaluate the echocardiography of this patient that's where the gross abnormality or the bulge of the left ventricle would definitely be highlighted now we will focus on what will be the treatment for this condition and that's again something which the examiner would love to ask you in the exam you see because this person is in cardiogenic shock because the myocardium is not working properly it's a stunned myocardium but please appreciate in this condition the reason for stunned myocardium you see st st stunned myocardium means sudden decrease in contractility of the heart in myocardial infarction the sudden decrease in contractility occurs because blood supply is not there in this case blood supply is okay but it is catecholamine induced damage to the myocardium which can actually recover over time so i'm saying another very surprising fact all cardiomyopathies are going to be having a chronic presentation but taco to subo cardiomyopathy can have a acute presentation and not only an acute presentation it can even show recovery you see when you talk about hocm you need to go in for implantable cardioverter defibrillator and alcohol based septal ablation dilated cardiomyopathy or let me say uh, ischemic cardiomyopathy you need to go in for a cardiac transplantation because it's a flabby heart same is the case for stiff cardiomyopathy this fibrosis in the heart you need to go for a cardiac transplantation but in this particular condition i especially want you to remember that recovery is possible that's again a highlight of this topic so i am going to treat the cardiogenic shock of this patient by deploying various devices do not answer dopamine dobutamine for management of cardiogenic shock of tachycardia cardiomyopathy because how will dopamine dobutamine act they will increase catecholamines and remember what was the villain in this entire discussion what was causing the manifestations it was catecholamines so we are not going to give dopamine dobutamine in fact it's the first time that i am saying person is having cardiogenic shock and do not give dopamine dobutamine to the patient rather we going to deploy devices like intra aortic balloon pump iabp that is intra aortic balloon counter pulsation that will take over the function of the left ventricle because left ventricle is anyway malfunctioning the objective of deploying these devices is to improve the coronary perfusion the objective is basically to stabilize the heart per se and along with this as the patient will recover then we can also use ac inhibitors in these patients even beta blockers are used in low dosages so as to control the oxygen consumption so i'm talking about palliative care in this case and the good news is that in all cardiomyopathies do you have a chronic presentation and recovery will not occur Uh, pending a transplantation i mean if you do a transplantation obviously he might get his life back or some some years of his life will be relatively better without suffering but in this case studies have shown that if you manage this case and are able to diagnose this case in the cath lab then recovery is definitely possible in broken heart syndrome the usual presentation of this question would be after intense emotional trauma like if you go through questions of the aims exam the formerly aims exam you will notice that he talked about two brothers who are elderly now like both of them are 65 70 years of age and they had a nasty fight maybe over a property and they had such a bad fight that the elder brother he was so heartbroken that his younger brother had abused him used abusive words in front of children of the house that he clutched his chest and he just sat down and when they took him to the hospital they thought it is a myocardial infarction but it was found in the cath lab that it was not a mi it was actually a tachycardia cardiomyopathy which is a differential diagnosis of this condition <music>